Hey everybody. So, as the title of the video says, I've got some airbrushing to do, so why not hang out while I do it? Clearly, jack-o'-lanterns aren't typically white. Um, I am working on a sugar piece for uh, a collaboration. So I'm only gonna do some of the stuff. You won't see the completed project today, but we'll hang out, we'll talk airbrush, we'll get some coloring done on this, and uh, see where it goes. So if you have questions, pop them in the comments. I will be more than happy to answer them if I see them pop up. Um, otherwise, just hang out and watch this thing basically come to life. Hello, Karina. Say hey, let me know where you're coming in from. Any minute I should have children running through the door and the joys of working from home, but we shall see how that goes. You just airbrushed some flowers, Catherine? I'm about to airbrush this guy, see how it goes. Airbrushing makes me nervous because, you know, sometimes you only really get one shot. Already through the door. Uh, it's all about, yeah, Catherine, it's definitely all about uh, layering and you will get it. It's just, it's nerve wracking. It's like you're about to shoot paint at something and most times it's, un it's irreversible and yeah. So clearly I didn't clean my airbrush the last time I used it. Not shocked. Uh, but it was a brown color that was in it, so I'm not overly worried. I'm just gonna run some airbrush cleaner through it. Uh, you could use alcohol for this. I'm using, because I have it, uh, Chroma Colors Airbrush Cleaner. So literally just putting it in my airbrush and I'm just making sure my triggers work. Uh, my trigger is a little stiff from the, the color from the previous time being stuck inside. And clearly my spray booth is super awesome and spectacular and really, really expensive, <coughs> or not. It's clearly just a cardboard box from Home Depot that I cut open to catch my back spray. You can buy really awesome, great, super fancy spray brush, spray brush booths, but I don't, I don't um, use mine enough to warrant that. So I'm going to probably start I don't even know where to start with this piece. I'm gonna start with the inside of the mouth, I think. Uh, and I'm gonna lay in some red. The airbrush colors that I typically use are Chef Master. They're the same as the, they're the same as the food colors that I use as well. And I'm mixing my colors right in my airbrush. Because this is obviously not something I need to perfectly match my color to. I can mix my colors right in my airbrush. I don't know if you can see what I did over there, but you can do it with your finger as well. So I put two different colors in my airbrush, block this, block your nozzle, and pull back on the trigger and it'll bubble. That's gonna mix your colors together without actually having to mix them. All right, so I'm gonna start inside the mouth. I put a bit of red and brown. I'm gonna dust this after as well. I'm just trying to lay a foundation color to get the overall feel for what I'm looking for. Slow and steady typically wins the race on this type of stuff, but sometimes I get a little too excited. Trigger happy, they would say. So again, I added a bit more brown to darken it up. I'm just gonna mix it together feed the red back through and fire some of that brown right into the back of the mouth. And just because it's in here and I don't want to waste it, I'm going to go into the back, just add some
Also, because I know someone's going to ask, the airbrush that I'm using is nothing expensive and or fancy. It's just a run-of-the-mill, low-end airbrush. I know, I love seeing it actually finally come to life. So when you're looking at it when it's white, you're like, oh, it's a cool piece. It was actually black to begin with. I made the whole thing with, because I had a ridiculous amount of black fondant. So I laid all the foundation pieces in black, and then I went over it in white, and then started adding all the texture and the details. But yeah, it was originally black. But pumpkins aren't black, and this one's not intended to be black either. Like I said, it'll, I'll add more depth and texture and detail with um, the color dusts once the airbrush dries. So now I'm just going in with some pink, because again, inside his mouth, there's lots of different reds, browns, pinks. I'm just gonna mix a bit of brown in this one as well. Could easily add some black in here if I wanted, but it means I'd have to go find the black. So obviously, as you look into something, into the depths of it, it's going to be darker in the back, lighter towards the front. Sheila, am I still doing cake classes? Um, I'm hoping to plan some for the new year. As of right now, I have nothing planned. And if I do have extra that I can't get rid of or don't want to use on my piece, it's the beauty of having this box that I just spray it on it, most times playing with it, but you know. I'm gonna go in with a little just brown to add some other. I also am enjoying how, I don't know if you can see it. This, it's really thick, wet here. So it's pooling in places, but it's pooling in like the crevices of the mouth that I created. So I'm really enjoying what's happening there. It was not the original intent, but hey, it's working. Just casting some more shadow, making that pink not so pink. And I like it. Just because this is going to be brown anyway. So obviously you can tell I'm not super worried about getting these colors onto the rest of the pumpkin. I'm going to layer a bunch of colors now. All the colors I'm using are all going to be in it anyway. Now if this were, you know, I had my final color done first and I was trying to get this brown, I would be sure to protect below it because no matter what you think, airbrush goes everywhere. And if you've never airbrushed before, don't panic the next day when your boogers are green, or blue, or yellow, or every color of the rainbow, for that matter. Because realistically, or ideally, I should be wearing a mask to do this. Now, I'm gonna start layering orange. Um, oranges, reds, yellows, all those colors in and around the pumpkin itself. Let's start with yellow. You can always add more color, removing it, like I said, for anybody tuning in always going to be a lot harder. So 
I tend to, depending on what the piece is, I'll start with the lightest color first. Other times I'll start with the darker color first. In this case, I'm gonna start with the lighter because it's going to be more of a dark cake anyway. So I don't want to have these bright whites, but they'll help add highlight areas to the cake. So the outer edge of, or the top part of the bumps should be your highlighted parts. In here, in your crevice, that's where your, your low lights will go. So adding that yellow really strongly on the top of the bumps, maybe a little in the crevices. and then I'll go in and layer other colors. I'm going to go in with some copper, flesh tone color. Again, it's just going to be another variation of a yellow orange color. So I'm just trying to get lots and lots of color dimension. So this color is going to bring in some pinks, which is going to help match the inside of the mouth to the outside. And then you'll get a better gradient of color between the different tones and colors used instead of going from stark yellow to, or a bright yellow to like a stark deep orange. So this color actually comes from Americolor neither of whom are sponsoring this video, so they're just the colors I prefer to use. If you use other colors, awesome. Um, but I use Chef Master and Americolor for almost all of my colors. So you can already see how the colors are starting to come together. A lot of white down here. And I only ever put a few drops in at a time because you don't want to waste this stuff. I mean, I could fill this little cat, this little cup up each and every time, but what's the point? I'd rather refill it 40 times than waste the product. So, unless I know I'm doing a big thing, I don't typically fill it up all the way. I'm just reading your comment there now. Just I can't read the whole thing. Do, 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 do. I don't know if it'll let me read your comment. Do I prefer airbrushing from all white or adding colors? So it depends on what I'm doing. When I'm doing something sculpted like this, I don't know what's beyond that. Then add more. Uh, it goes. It doesn't give me the. I can't open it to expand the comment. Um, but when I'm working on sculptured pieces like this, I prefer to go all white. Um, so that I can just add pieces in and then airbrush from there. Oh, I've never opened this one.
and again, also depending on what I'm doing, I don't airbrush. So last year's piece that I did, uh, I don't know if everybody's seen him, but the alien, um, he was made completely white as well. But I didn't airbrush him, I painted him completely with paintbrushes by hand uh, using color dusts, alcohol, and some thinned out food colors. So it really depends on the look you're going for and the finish in the end. So this color is very much like the flesh tone except a little less pink. This is just orange. And then I'm going to take that orange, that same orange, and I'm going to add a bit of brown to it. Airbrush is very quick. Um, problem being is the mess that it makes. And secondly, um, you know, again, it gives a different texture. Uh, Jessica, yeah, with hand painting, you, it, it's not hard to be heavy handed, um, but if you start with thinned out paints or food colors that are really thinned out, it's like I said, always easier to go back and add more than to overdo it in the beginning. So like I was saying when I was doing the yellow, I had the yellow more strongly presented on the tops of these bumps versus the brown now I'm putting down in the crevices. So that's going to give me more dimension and it's going to make the cake look like it's a lot more indented than it really is. It's all about shadows and playing with light. So I'm not using straight brown, I am using orange mixed with brown. And again, for anybody who didn't notice, didn't see this in the beginning, I am simply adding straight to my airbrush gun, seal off the end, pull back your trigger. I don't know if you can see it, but it bubbles inside, which is gonna mix your colors together for you. instead of trying to mix them in a little container and then trying to pour that container in. I just mix right straight into Again, I'll go in with some color dusts and you'll see like where I have little warts on the pumpkin and things like that. Let's see, somebody's, I love to always have a problem moving the cake board without messing it. So it really depends, so I don't know if you, here I have my um, turntable covered in plastic wrap to help protect it and the down spray that comes off of it. Um, but. If you're trying to spray your board, then yes, I recommend that you leave it to dry before moving it. I mean, I won't be able to do anything more to this now until the airbrush fully dries, because all I'm gonna end up doing is sticking my finger in it and it's gonna kill the airbrush and it's really hard to get fingerprints out of a wet airbrush or sticky color.
I'm not gonna, I don't know if you can see because it is very, it looks really wet, but it's not. I just have really bright lights on. So it's washing it out. But the true to eye color that's happening here is a lot different than what you're seeing in the video. It's not nearly as bright in person as what it appears. So I'm going to add a few more dark spots. It's going to go in with some pure brown now. Actually, this was probably not the brown I wanted. Uh, okay, it's fine. I'll use a little bit of it. Add a bit of darker color onto these little warts. Obviously, this pumpkin is not your pretty pumpkin that we all like to see at fall on the doorsteps. This is a little more complex than that. So, I'm just darkening in where the eyes would be. Again, using brown. I didn't want to come in with any blacks because blacks are really, really, really harsh. So I like to stick within the same color families. made you procrastinate when you I didn't make you do anything that's your personal choice um, I have lots to be doing as well but I needed to get this done too so if I get this out of the way now then I'll be able to work on other things while it dries to come back to it after uh, I do classes I'm located in Newfoundland Canada um, I am looking at doing some classes away and traveling um, the, all of the logistics and things of those have not been figured out yet Christine um, so just keep an eye on man versus cake uh, anything that I do will be posted there uh, so that uh, people will know where I am and how to attend the classes. So again, airbrushing. So for anybody who's at wondering what the difference between airbrushing or dusting versus anything else, if you notice how shiny this looks in the light, that's one of the downsides to airbrushing. UK classes, Sandra. My goodness, that's an awful trick. Um, I will be in Ireland in March uh, with Kara. We will be teaching at Nice, which is the Northern Ireland Sugar Expo. So if you are in that neck of the woods, you can see us there. Uh, but I will be doing solo classes and stuff uh, that I'm still trying to work on the details of. But yes, so dry dusting versus airbrushing. Uh, airbrushing does leave a sheen on stuff. Uh, so I'll go in and I'll dry dust it to bring that down. I just went in with a little bit of harvest brown instead of, or not harvest brown, sorry, um, warm brown um, because it was lighter than the brown that I was using, which was harvest brown. Um, Christine, I will be traveling the States. Uh, like I said, I'm not quite, I obviously won't make all of them. Um, San Antonio potentially is in the works. Um, I, or I'd love to hit up San Antonio. Um, potentially, anyway, there's a few places I may be able to uh, hit up in the U.S. But I'm done for now, guys. I don't want to overdo the airbrush because I do want to come in with some dusts and powders and give it some more highlights and lowlights using the powders. 
So I'm going to leave it at this for now. If you're watching the replay, thank you for tuning in uh, and for watching. If you have questions, please, please feel free to post them, and I will do my absolute best to respond. But this went from a white pumpkin, and in about, I don't know, how long have we been on? I can't see. It doesn't tell me anymore. Um, 20 minutes or so, it became this sinister-looking jack-o'-lantern that's going to eat you. Back up. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. It was a pleasure. 25 minutes. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, and that's with talking to you guys. So if I was just having to be doing this, it wouldn't take long. Uh, as I believe it was Jessica who said, it takes um, not very... It doesn't take very long to airbrush, which is why she enjoys doing it. Uh, it is one of the reasons why I chose to airbrush this as well. SoFlo in Miami. I'm not sure. Uh, to be honest with you, Evelyn, I will have to see. It will have to depend on the dates. Um, I do know SoFlo is a big show, and they do have a lot of people who teach. Um, but I would do my absolute best to consider. Uh, Claudia, it is not modeling chocolate. It's actually a mix. It's a 50-50 blend. Mm, and that might be a lie. That is a lie. Um, because it was already made. I make my own fondant. So it's actually made with fondant um, underneath all of the structure bits. So like these lumps um, and the ridges inside of his mouth. And this structure, which was covered over with fondant after, that is made with a 50-50 blend. So it's 50% fondant, 50% modeling chocolate. Um, but the overall outside, the stem, the eyebrows, most of the mouth, that's all just straight fondant. All right, guys, again, thanks so much. It was an absolute pleasure hanging out with you. Please subscribe. Uh, when you click the, or when I click end on this, it will give you the option to subscribe to know when I'm live in the future. Uh, I would love to hang out with you. So please subscribe. You'll know when I'm live and we can chat next time. Take care, guys, and have a fabulous day.